Have you ever had a game you've never got around to playing? For me, that's Minecraft, which came out 11 years ago. Before this video, I played a total of 42 minutes of Minecraft, building a house in which I forgot a roof. I'm the epitome of the word noob. Then I watched Luke the Notable and his 100 day series and thought, what could I learn in 100 days without any help or guidance? So sit your butt down for half an hour, go subscribe to Luke the Notable who founded this format and let's see what a newcomer to Minecraft can achieve in 100 days with no help from anyone at all. This is going to be painful. Day one, I awoke in my new world after setting the seed to penny thick. Yes, I'm a fully grown adult and I'm extremely immature. In the distance, I noticed a mountain and decided that that would be my home. To celebrate, I punched the plant life. It took a long time to arrive at my destination because at this point, I didn't know there was a run button. I quickly made a hobbit hole and began to make a bachelor pad. It wasn't much, but at least I had a campfire to sing songs like a real boy scout. At this point, I noticed the sounds of the zombies nearby. It's, it's quite unnerving. And I waited for daybreak. Day two arrived. I gave myself a task of making glass windows. I hoped science class would help me here, so I grabbed sand from the beach. Ooh, what physics. I wasted the rest of the day trying to understand how to make glass. But don't worry, I figured it out. Let's not discuss how long that took me. Day three, I'm still making windows. I'm new to this, don't judge me. Day four, I finished my window, so I knocked down a nearby hill to let more light in and let the world see these pro level building skills. Damn, I'm good. Day five was my lumberjack day. I spent the entire day hitting trees. I found it relaxing, to be honest. I wasn't stressing out at all, for now. Cancel that. On the way home, a size zero Robin Hood decided to attack. I ran away and hid, like the real man I am. Back home, I still didn't know how to make a bed, so I made a hat to pass the time. I'm gorgeous. Day six, while AFKing in the night, a zombie dude got in. I pretended to be a statue until we fought. I got the victory in my first encounter with a god tier opponent. I spent the rest of the day mining into the mountain to block off any further attacks like that. Day seven, I found iron ore. This is important to note because it's the only iron I find in what feels like forever. To celebrate, I made new shoes. Damn, I'm a sexy motherfucker. Day eight, I got completely lost. Let's not talk about day eight. On day nine, I made a storage box. I absolutely went insane when two of these boxes became one big box. It was my first big brain moment. On day 10, it was time to make a bedroom. These sleepless nights were taking their toll on my pixelated body. I hunted down a sheep in the hopes their wool could keep me warm. I made a white bed. I should have made a brown bed for what was going to come in the next few days. On day 11, I had my first taste of community life when a guy with Harry Potter's llamas stood on my roof. I tried to steal the llamas, but couldn't. Damn it. Day 12, I found horses. I was so happy I couldn't contain myself. I offered them sapling and accidentally punched one in the head. I hope he forgives me. Later that day, I returned with an apple as a token of my apology. He loved it. So I jumped on his back and fell straight off. Now here on day 13, I have been here almost two weeks and I still don't know how to farm. Today was the day that changed. Leveling off the ground outside my hobbit window, allowing me to monitor the crops all day and night. Genius, I thought. What a pro I am. I instantly realized I couldn't plant anything. So I made a hoe and put her to work. Then I spread my seed and waited. Day 14 was pretty much the same. I remember dropping off with my hand covered in my own seed. I should have washed my hands. So should you. Day 15 was here, the day of my first ever harvest. And damn it, I planted a tree accidentally. Farming life ain't for me. Well, not yet anyway. Oh, and in all the commotion, I forgot to show you my pet chicken. He's called Chuck and he has his own pen. I'm lonely, all right? Day 16 is a monumental day. I found civilization. I followed a feral wolf into a new town. I timidly went inside, expecting to be mugged for my killer sneakers and gangster hat. But no, they were great people. In fact, I'd learned this day that villagers are here to swap goods with. I now have a reason to hunt for leather and whatever these green Zelda ruppy things are. I also learned that jumping on crops is possible and stealing other people's crops is possible too. You saw nothing. Looking back on day 17 is painful. I was mining, but at this point I had no idea about how deep I needed to go to get the best resources. I can see now that I was wasting my time, but on day 17, I felt like a legit adventurer. I spent so long in the depths of the mine, I had no idea what day it was. Turns out it was day 18. I found a zombie child this day, which blew my puny mind. I helped him escape this purgatory and hoped his dad wouldn't notice. He did, 
so I sent him to meet his kid in the afterlife. On my third day straight in the mines, I finally found more iron. I was so happy, but immediately a skeleton attacked me. I was so confused, I tried to Fortnite, building walls to protect me, and then I attempted to crank a 90. Bad idea, I died. I was legitimately gutted. I thought that was the end of the game, but then I awoke. I had chosen survival mode and I couldn't have been happier. My journey continued. I spent the rest of the day hunting down my equipment and got lost again. It was bound to happen. Day 20, the Harry Potter llama guy returned. I noticed his llamas were not on lead this time, so I stole them. Get out of that pen, Chuck. I have real companionship now. One llama hated me so much he spat all over my sweet sneakers. In retaliation, I murdered their former father. I named them Luke and Leia in homage to the real Dark Father. Day 21, I finally realized I could use both of my hands. I told you I was a noob, so I made a shield and shouted this is Sparta whilst killing the wildlife. It was a good day. Day 22, I returned to the villagers. I wanted to know how their crops grew so fast, whereas mine took forever. Oh, it's water, of course it's water. So off I went with my new knowledge after stealing all of their crops. Again, the following day I made a bucket. Iron is hard to come by in my world, okay? But by the end of the day, I finally understood how to farm. I also used my shield today. Check this out. I'm a badass. As we hit day 24, I decided to take more care of my hobbit house. Renovations began in earnest. I first made a storage room. It wasn't much, but I felt like I had big boy brain. I even made corresponding signs. Woo! Day 25, I set myself a new task. Climb up high and make a lighthouse just in case I got lost again. So far, I've become lost three times and wasted so much time getting home again. So no longer this will happen. All I have to do now is keep an eye on the horizon and run towards my erection. Day 26 arrived and went before I even realized. I was mining and building like I was possessed. I wanted to find diamonds today. It didn't happen, but that's okay. Day 27, I got lost again. It's becoming a nuisance now. Anyway, I watched the green testicle zombie explode today. I now understand why they're creepers. Sneaky little feckers. On day 28, I had given up on ever returning home. On the plus side, I saw rainfall for the first time. I didn't know that was possible in Minecraft. So I frolicked and forgot about having nowhere to live. The next day, I saw snowfall and thunder and lightning. This was awesome to see. Also a pack of zombie mountaineers. You don't see those every day. I loved all this, but I really started to miss my hobbit house. Now on day 30, all my luck was about to change for the better. I spotted the makeshift tower I built on the high mountain top. This was it, I was home, legit great feeling. I know it's only pixelated blocks, but don't take this moment away from me. I'm home, mama. When I entered my home, I realized I was mid-renovation, so the last five days were a complete waste of time. Oh well, back to work. I worked through the night on day 31 to extend my hobbit home and let in more light. It's not much, but I knew the aesthetic I wanted, sort of modern, rustic, and natural all in one. I mean, come on, I live in a man cave, just like in real life. Now, day 32, I stepped back and looked at my masterpiece. It is, well, it's hideous. I'm a complete failure to my family. Also, my llamas vanished today. I didn't know disappearing pets was a thing. Damn you, Minecraft. I never got to say goodbye to Luke and Leia. Day 33, one third of my way through my noob playthrough. I'm still renovating, but my plans have changed. I'm changing my door location. This is huge news, I'm sure you'll agree. On day 34, I finally figured out how to attract fat pigs, apart from my girlfriend, of course. A carrot! I also figured out that too much carrots equals unwanted pregnancies. Biology class didn't prepare me for this day, but by the end of the day, they were safe in the llama pen. I should probably rename this pen. They may ask questions. Day 35, I decided to make a giant ladder, just like the one in Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater. It's great. Sadly, my PC had a brain fart and I lost all the footage. It started recording again just after I died. Here it is. Oh man, I wasn't recording. <laughs> now on day 36, I've died twice, but I'm still happy. I don't know what the green XP bar is for yet, and now it's at zero again. I couldn't care less, honestly. I spent the day mining. Oh, damn it, I forgot a pickaxe. Punching blocks takes forever. Day 37 arrived just in time to witness a new Minecraft block I'd never seen before. Blue gold. Lapis Lazuli. Who's she? I honestly thought I was seeing things. I hadn't taken a break in 444 minutes, but that's only seven and a half hours. Come on, those are rookie numbers. Day 38, today was a good day. I found gold and then I spotted green gold. I checked, it's emerald. Day 36 was a great day to be not dead. 
Day 39. Hey, look, I got lost again. Don't worry, I made it home. On day 40, I learned that water can break falls, so I put some at the foot of my snake eater ladder. By the way, is that game reference too old? I am a fully grown man playing Minecraft. <laughs> When day 41 arrived, I noticed I forgot to turn the game off. I came back to my game dead. Here's a pro tip, save and exit your games. I also found a crystal headlouse thing today. And as I'm the only thing that causes rashes around here, I eliminated him. Oh, and look, red gold. No idea what this is for, but I'm sure I'll figure it out sometime. On day 42, I went back to my humble farm and improved my relationship with the livestock. Then I grew my plot of land without asking for permission. I created a chicken coop today. I decided to use the eggs I couldn't figure out how to cook and just threw them at the ground. It worked surprisingly well. One chicken got away right away. I was going to murder it, but instead I led it back with seeds. I'm a legit farmer right now. Day 43, I forgot to pause the game. Here's my farm. One day, one day this will impress you, one day. On day 44, I found a lava pit, and once again, I went into big brain mode, pouring water on the flames to see what happened. Cobblestone, anticlimax. I wasn't put off, I tried this the other way round, creating this monstrosity. It's unminable at present, but don't worry, I knew what to do. Day 45 arrived, and I was so hyped to try my brand new gold pickaxe on the blackstone. This was going to be epic! What the hell? Fake gold rubbish. I stood here all day, it won't break. So instead, I used a gold pickaxe on the local stone. It was great, so much faster than anything else, but this euphoria was short-lived. Piece of cheap sh As the night drew in, I noticed someone urinating on my land. Our eyes met, we knew there could be only one. I used my superior Fortnite building skills again to gain the high ground and decapitate his block-stealing face. Day 46 was a day on the farm, creating a larger plantation and once again rubbing up with the farm animals. These things procreate quicker than your mum. <laughs> I also hit the black stuff again, nothing happened. On day 47, I finally got around to building a staircase for my new door. It's not much, but I'm proud of it. The very next day, I went back to farming. But if you're a vegan, close your eyes now. This was cutthroat farming. Don't judge me, I like burgers. Now in day 48, I decided to go back to the local villagers. We hadn't spoken since that early day. And when I got there, most had left. I panicked and caged in all the people who hadn't run away yet. You will stay, we will do business. Now check how epic day 49 is. I gave a dog a bone. We became the bestest friends in the whole wide world. On our way home, we were attacked by grey people. Is that racist? My bitches and I slayed them. We were repaid with a flag. We placed it on our wall to commemorate our first ever victory. There, yeah, creeper. You piece of sh- Day 50, I'm already sick of these dogs. So I made one a prison. And when, I mean kennel, kennel, not a certainly not a prison. He's happy in there. Well, I think he's happy. But anyway, look at the build. It's looking nice and lovely. On day 51, I realized I hadn't found a single diamond in 50 days. I was beyond annoyed and changed my mining technique. I dug straight down for so, so long. I was finding diamonds today, whatever happened. Day 52, still no diamonds. I retract my previous statement. I spent today with the animals to feel better about myself. Day 53, we are back in the mines. My will to live was diminishing at this point. But as day broke on day 54, I stumbled across more emeralds. Hang on a minute, those are diamonds. Look how happy I am. Or maybe I'm having a fit. Maybe it's both. Quick, call an ambulance. I spent the whole of day 55 attempting to find my way back home. I think we've established how terrible my sense of direction is. This, plus the handful of diamonds I was carrying, led to the most tense I've ever felt in Minecraft. I made it back home, so I had no need to worry. I then crafted a diamond pickaxe and sword. And to make the occasion even more special, I also made almost a full set of gold armor. Damn, I look good. Day 56, I'm in mining heaven. This pickaxe makes things so much easier. 55 days of torture are now worth it for this beast. On day 57, I found this thing. I stayed calm and asked my discord if it was friend or foe. They said foe, so I killed it and all its children. Quick, hide the evidence. I've changed so much since I found diamonds. What is this anyway? Uh, it's slime, yuck. Day 58 in the mines. I intended to make more diamond pickaxes, but accidentally became sidetracked and made a diamond chess piece. I now look ridiculous, and now I'm completely out of diamonds. But don't worry, I found more. YOLO. Damn it, nobody says that anymore. 
The very next day, the peer pressure to match my armour became too much for me, and C-3PO Adamaru arrived. Oh my, I look good. Day 60. Well, looking back at the footage, the highlight was a fox getting into my chicken enclosure and eating every last one of them. There must have been around 100 in here. On the plus side, we now have a fox. Then out of nowhere, a new enemy type showed up and ruined the party. So I ran away. On day 61, I woke up and wanted vengeance for my chicks. The fox got his comeuppance and I decided to upgrade my farm to better protect the animals. The chicken pen was revitalized too, with these new recruits. I began to spiral down into madness by day 62. The loss of my chicks hit me hard. I decided to make a glass fortress around the animals. I had no real idea why. Oh, and later that day, I was culling the local fox population and remembered the black stuff in the water. I quickly used the diamond pickaxe and completed the ice bucket challenge. Obsidian! I was so happy. I then decided to go back to my glass prison for my animals. On day 63, I liked this obsidian so much I filled buckets of lava and threw them in the water. I now had enough obsidian to make a portal. Well, I thought I did. I've seen portals in other people's videos, but I've never really paid attention to how they are constructed. So damn it. This is going to be a long trial. Please bear with me. Oh well, we can always go back to the prison build. Hang on, how did a creeper get in there? Day 64 came and the glass prison was complete. I forgot why I made this. Oh yeah, 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 the foxes. Next time, I'll be prepared. On day 65, the raiders returned again, and with more numbers. Still, no match for my shield and reflective Wonder Woman skills. Take that, crime. Oh, I spoke too soon. There are even more now. I took their flag. It looks great on my hobbit house. By the way, I created a storeroom in my old hallway for things I smelted often. It streamlined everything. I finally felt like I was becoming a better player. Still a complete noob, but a little bit better. Day 66 in my first ever playthrough of Minecraft, I tried to make a portal. Like I said, I'd seen these before, so I had a little bit of a clue what to do. Something to do with fire and a big door. Other than that, I'm clueless. And FYI, I experimented with this every few days. I won't include them in the video because they're very boring and you don't want to see a noob failing so many times. Anyway, if it comes to it, I'll just pretend that this is art. On day 67, I decided to make all the random things I'd never made before. The books were interesting as they allowed me to create a bookshelf. I hoped something cool would happen here. It didn't. Then I had a stroke. No, <laughs> then I had a master stroke. Very different. I intended to take the random things I'd made and see if I could sell them to the local villagers and maybe even see them use them, change their professions. I feel like I've heard that before. This was going to be epic, I was so optimistic. And when I got there, a raid bar began to fill. What the hell does that mean? The villagers were going insane with stress. I thought, don't worry about it, I shall be your protector. I've never failed in a battle yet. Well, I was wrong, I was, I was wrong. I was dead wrong. Unperturbed, I ran back in to gather my belongings and fight the horde. I won, cause I'm epic. But hang on, another raid incoming. I was doing okay, fighting gallantly, but then this happened. I was run over by a bull. I'm not going to pretend this went very well. Over the next three days, we continue to fight. A total of 13 raids in a row. I died many, many, many times. Including once, the exact moment I respawned. By the way, my tactic was to open a door and offer one in for a 1v1 and then beat the crap out of them. It was a good tactic. But the bull was impossible to fight. Oh, I was triggered. I was so triggered. Every time I won the fight, another horde came to battle. Every time I respawned, I died again. I decided to restart my game. And here's the thing. When I restarted the game, it was day 69. Whoop, whoop. But luckily the raids had ended, but the villagers were all dead. Rip the dream. I came back and it was a village of raiders. My hopes to give the villagers their new skills and professions were shattered before I even had the chance to start. This was a horrible three days in my first ever Minecraft playthrough, but on the plus side, I'd learned so much about protecting villagers and maybe building a wall to prevent those raids in future. Day 70, I was feeling quite reflective and spent the day mining. I started to use a strip mining method deep in the ground. I stuck to the level where I first found a diamond. Although I do enjoy spelunking more, the strip mine method is so much quicker and nets that green XP bar that I don't know how to use. 
yet. The next day, I met a lanky black dude. I was expecting to be attacked, but no, he was fine with my presence. I was okay with him being here too, so we became bros. I sort of regret what I did to his real brother. Let's not tell him. When day 72 arrived, I decided a change was needed. I hadn't moved away from my home base for longer than a day, so I made a compass and decided to walk in a straight line until I found civilization. I chose south. Well, I think it's south. I'm not completely sure how to use a compass. Yes, I got lost, but look what I found on day 73. A village! The smoke signal caught my attention. A great little village with a raucous set of people who liked this bell. I'd lost one community before, so I set to work right away. My plan was simple, box in the inhabitants whilst making a pen for the town to be isolated within. It's, hmm, it sounds like the real world right now. I worked through the night, cutting down any trees that could hide the undead. I took on those zombies in the rain. I was a man on a mission. I also figured out how to turn the zombies against each other this night. The undead now fight for me. For a little bit. As sunrise rose on day 74, the fence was almost complete and all trees were gone. This was going well. A creeper tried to ruin everything whilst I was crafting away, but I'm now a ninja and escaped the explosion. I was feeling invincible. I allowed the villagers a little yard time whilst I constructed more houses in this quarantine zone. That night, I went back to my idea from last week, attempting to give villagers career paths. After throwing down a smithing table, this dude immediately jumped out of bed to fulfill his life's passion. I was feeling good right now and immediately set up a smoker to see if anybody else wanted a job. They didn't. Day 75 in this noob world, everything in the village was set up. A farm, a fence, a thriving community. I felt happy enough to leave my new family and venture back home. I decided to make a path all the way home. I don't know why I did this. I used a compass to get here, so theoretically I could just walk north and it would lead me to my hobbit hole. And on day 76, I reached home, making the worst decision of my playthrough in the process, mining through a crevasse. Suddenly, a zombie child appeared. I was helpless, what could I do? But things immediately got worse. Oh f I hate creepers. Luckily, getting back to my gear was simple enough. Just follow the terrible brick road. I was looking forward to grabbing that useless XP. Only seven levels, where's the rest? I finished the walkway which entered my house by the failed obsidian portal and the snake eater ladder. For the rest of the day, I farmed. I fed the animals. Hmm, things are getting a little too cozy in here. Day 77, big brain moment. I decided to make a railroad to my villagers. I used all my iron ingots to make these bad boys. It was epic and it was great until momentum ended things or lack of momentum, I should say. My dreams of traveling to the outpost whilst going to the loo in real life were over. I knew I had to fix this. So I decided to experiment. Experiment number one, use activator rails. If you play Minecraft, you know this was a terrible decision. But if you've come to learn from my mistakes, here's one. I jumped back in the cart and raced towards the rails, but nothing happened. After much deliberation, I created a lever to activate the rails. Forgive my excitement here, mastermind I thought, I jumped back in my minecart and... What the hell was that? An electric shock! Long story short, activator rails were not what I thought they were. Day 78, I came back with a new plan, powered rails. These must be the right ones. They were heavy on gold resources, but after three days of making this path, I needed to make this work, placing down the rails sporadically as I didn't have many gold bars left. And I also remembered to use a lever to activate them. Anyway, I set sail. Would the powered rails give me a speed boost? Let's do this. Yes, oh yes, science wins. Legitimately, I felt great figuring this out all on my own. By the daybreak of day 79, I was back in the village with my people. From now on, young man, these will be called the village people. This was also the day I bought something from the smithy, a sharpened sword, all glowing with awesomeness. I don't know how this is done yet, but my guess is the enchantment table. Later that evening, I was growing the village's retail plaza when night rolled in. Six zombies somehow got inside the village's quarantine area. I had absolutely no idea how. Day 80, I awoke to the sound of whatever the hell these things are in the sky. My mission this day was to befriend a cat. I'd seen a few hanging around. My first attempt with cooked fish was completely futile. 
Or maybe the problem was my inability to attract pussy, just like in real life. That joke was totally too far, my apologies. But later, I tried again. I needed companionship, and now I had raw fish. And it was surprisingly easy. I made a new friend. And now for the last 20 days of this journey, you will hear this incessant meowing. Day 81, I spent the day showing members of my real life family my Minecraft railway. They weren't impressed, but I don't care. I love this thing. On day 82, I started another project. I was determined to learn how to use that portal, and every attempt I'd made so far was a failure. So I built myself a science room for all my testing. I was determined by day 100, I was going to the Netherlands. That's right, isn't it? The next day, the grey dudes returned. Don't worry, after this video, I will definitely find out what their real names are. But for now, they're called the Grey Marauders. I look forward to their attacks because I really like their flags now. I wish I collected more earlier, so I'm going to start now. Now it's day 84. I knocked down a nearby mountain blocking the light from my extension. Just look at this place. I wonder what I could do with another 100 days. Anyway, I started marking out another animal prison here. It's going to be a cattery. You know why. Day 85, Animal Farm! I love this place! <laughs> On to day 86, I'm continuing to make obsidian for my magic portal. I came prepared with fire in a bucket. I walked down to the river and this happened. I know I'm a noob, but this looks broken to me, right? I spent the rest of the day hitting obsidian blocks for science. I started thinking there must be a better way to make obsidian than this. And by the way, my next attempt at making a portal, that, that failed. That failed again, yeah. The closest I got was setting fire to obsidian. The cat knew I was an idiot, but looking back now, I was actually really close to achieving my goal. I made an obsidian machine in the early hours of day 87. I thought I was onto something by making water and fire flow into one another. I failed yet again. Science is hard. I also set myself ablaze today. In all the panic, I forgot I had water right next to me. Whoa, I almost committed dead. But don't worry, I'm okay. Stop judging me, cat. I was in the mine with that cat on day 88. I had a new way of making obsidian. But a moment came when I saw my judgmental cat stood one block above lava. I thought to myself, what would happen if that cat touched lava? I tested the theory. Who's laughing now, cat? <laughs> Later that day, I developed this technique to create obsidian. Wow, it felt good that something finally went my way. It's been weeks. Man, this stuff is hard to mine though. On day 89, I was still attempting to make a portal, this time using lava. Don't laugh at me. I was rudely interrupted by the grey marauders, standing on my brand new glass roof. I went on the warpath, taking down their general. I then attempted to sleep to see if the others would leave. They do not leave. So on day 90, the battle continued. As long as it doesn't say raid on the screen, I'm pretty confident in these battles. After victory, I put up another banner to further infuriate the intruders. I went back inside to work on my portal, only to notice everything was on fire. I panicked for a while, but then I put the fire out with an axe, as we all do. I noticed the hole left behind was my original mining back from day one. There's something poignant here. So I bricked it all up, because nostalgia is for the weak. Day 90, I was back on the farm. I noticed that every time I needed to think, I went back to the mindless work on the field and in the animal prison. My captives enjoyed my company too. I think they may have Stockholm Syndrome. In fact, you have Stockholm Syndrome if you're still watching this after 90 days. And yeah, I took a screenshot of the animals. It's for the bank if you know what I mean. Day 91 is a Eureka day. I finally figured it out. I made a portal. I stood there and admired it for hours. I jumped straight in to go to the Netherlands. Hang on, is my, my portal's broken? We'll come back to that soon. I decided to go check on my second attempt at keeping villagers alive. I jumped on the train. My in real life toilet breaks have been so productive. When I arrived back, things took a turn for the worse. A raid began. The one thing I truly fear in Minecraft. This will be a never ending cycle that kills off my beloved community. Or can I fight to survive? I quickly turned the difficulty down to normal instead of hard because I'm that kind of guy. The first three waves were all manageable, but the fourth wave, my progress halted. And once again, it was because of those oversized bulldozers. It took less than two seconds to kill me. I hate those things. So I hatched a plan to drop lava on the beast. It went horribly wrong. Now everything is on fire, but I've learned how to save myself from doing this before. 
The beast didn't know. It's the first time he's been on fire. So I won the battle. The raid is now over. Oh, it's not more. There's more. And now I have no fence. Oh, f my life. After setting myself on fire again, <laughs> the, the hordes were inside my compound. I tried to fight back, but I was completely overwhelmed yet again. And then I awoke. I was trapped in a box room with Jason Voorhees. I fought hard, my only weapon was seed for some reason, and there was only one possible outcome. The next life I continued this fight, and actually succeeded, and then gradually won the war. No more raiders. This fight lasted over three days again. It's now day 93. Suddenly, the raid was called off. My guess is there's a time limit that's reached, because I couldn't kill them quick enough. But hey, it wasn't 13 this time, so let's look at the positives. I grabbed as many banners as I could, and put them on display. Through the night of day 94, I rebuilt the village. That fire damage took its toll. And then something clicked. I finally understood how professions work in Fortnite. I feel like I'm only just learning the basic mechanics right now, and my 100 days are almost over. I was in reflective mood again and took the train home to try a final few things before my time was up. On day 95, I ventured back into the original village, the one that was pillaged and ransacked by the marauders. And when I got there, all the marauders had moved on. The town was eerily silent. I found a survivor. The one guy I managed to block in his home is still here and willing to do business, even though he's lost everything and everyone he knows. Day 96, I set myself one final task, the last thing I would construct in my 100 days. But when I ascended, there were too many enemies, so I went to sleep instead. Morning broke on day 97. Let's get building. Can you guess what I'm going to construct? I had to keep climbing down to ground level and climbing back up again to get a view of everything, which made the construction time much longer. On day 98, we're so close to getting this finished. There's a little bit more. It's worth it. I promise. Day 99 arrived, and just as the sun set on my final full night, it was ready. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce Hutwatch Minecraft Edition. Proudly sitting above my original Hobbit house, a symbol of my tough times and all the things we've achieved. If you're still here now, thanks for coming on this journey with me. I hope it's been entertaining. Here we go, our final day, day 100. I took one last look at my home and ventured into the nether. How would my journey end? See for yourself. Well, that's, that's one way to end the video. Thanks for watching. Please write 200 in the comments if you'd like to see a second episode. If you've been here for the full episode, thank you so much. It's been emotional. I'm Adam, the Minecraft noob. See you next time.